Why are we doing this, Joe? Because every time we see a rusty Jeep, all we can hear is a Sarah McLaughlin song. Through the arms of an angel, come away with... Okay, that's... I'm at the point now that my friends know that I make things out of scrap metal, and they offer me some pretty interesting things. I was staying with my friend Jeff a few weeks ago, and he said if I could get this Jeep out of the woods, I could have it. This is Jeff. Tell me about this Jeep. What do you know about this Jeep? It's a uh, 2018. It's got 32,000 miles on it. It was in a fender bender. That's why there's a little rust on the bumper. But otherwise, overall in good shape. I had it on Craigslist for a while, but nobody wanted to give me the money I think it's worth. So, Do you know what you got here? I do you know what you got? Do you know, know it's what worth? I got? You don't need to sell it, do you? I have no idea what I got or what it's worth. We did eventually figure out that this is a 1956 CJ5. I mean, we knew it was a CJ5, but the serial number tells us it's from 1956. And Jeff said it had been sitting here since he bought the place about 25 years ago. This is probably kind of pointless, but we'll see if she'll take some air. I think one tire is going to hold air. One might hold enough to be usable. One's going to leak out, and one's just not going to take any air. That's my prediction. What do you think, Joe? I think that's about right. 25% chance of everything. It sounds like there's air going into that. Yeah. You can hear it creaking a little bit. Seems like it's lifting up. Lifting up a little. Hey, back. Those. That holds. We're already doing better than predicted. Well, we said one's going to leak out. That's true. So this could be the leaker. So. Want to keep going up? Might as well. Yeah, I mean, we can get those two by eights. Especially with air in it. So we've got a bunch of trees behind it here. We've got a poplar tree in front of it there. And then over here we have the remains of an old building with nails and all that assorted broken glass and such. Our plan's gonna be to try to pull it this way and then back along the side of the brush pile over there and then out to the road. Yeah, it's moving sideways. That's how it's done. Nothing like a sanitary old uh, tablecloth to there cover up that bit of Vermont on the driver's seat.
at that. There's a piece of plastic on here, so this actually stayed really dry despite the fact that the forest growing on it. Oh, look at that. It should have a prop rod in here somewhere. I think it just leans up against the... Got some mice eviction. What do you think, Joe? Will this start? I don't know. If you had asked me before we started looking in here, I'd say, oh, absolutely not. But, I don't know. The radiator inside looks clean. I mean, with a, with a little bit of tinkering and some cleaning up, I mean... We end up with one tire that's holding air. That one looks like it's leaking a little bit, but this wheel's also locked up, so it was dragging the whole way. And looking pretty good on the other side, so I'm kind of surprised by that. So they were good tires in its day. Also got, uh, might need some new leaf springs on this side. That one's not so hot either. I came back another day with the trailer. This time it was a solo mission, which made it a little bit more challenging, especially because the track width on the Jeep is right about the same as the inside of the ramps on the trailer, but I got it done. Grabbed a piece of wood from the wood pile there, and out of all those pieces, I happened to grab the one that had a wasp nest on it. Only got stung once. I didn't get video of unloading this because it was getting late and I had to get the trailer back, but she made it home safe and sound. I think I'm going to call her Eileen. I'm just putting a couple of wood blocks between the axles and the frame. It doesn't really do much other than make it look a little less sad. Give her a little bit of dignity. The initial assessment on the motor is it's pretty darn stuck. We'll do the usual penetrating oil down the spark plugs. I'm not planning on using this motor ultimately, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time trying to get this started, but you know it's YouTube, that's what we do here. These things are all just in like two threads and they're all just really disgusting. So I decided to just stick the air hose down in there as far as I can and try to blow it out, and it's just blowing water out. I'm not sure if that's water or oil. I'm gonna get these struts out of the way just to give a little bit more room to try to wrench on this thing. I do like this throttle return spring modification here. 
And I think I'm going to start with taking off this hard top. This is a Koenig Ironworks top. It's the same vintage as the Jeep. It's kind of got a combination of male Jeep, armored car, and maybe a little of the 407 7th mixed in. I think it's pretty cool for as homely as it is. The doors should just lift off, but of course the hinges are a little bent, so they're a little stubborn. So looking at this thing, it's all modular. The top will unbolt from the sides. The back gate will just slide off too. And since this thing's going to be in storage for a while, I think it's worth probably just breaking it down the whole way. So interesting thing here, this piece really didn't look original to me. And so I measured about 49 and a quarter at the top. And then going off the inner part there. So it's actually splayed out about an inch. So that means that the prior repairs to the tub have it splayed out an inch. And with the tape measure, we'll confirm that. But that's a problem for future Jeremy. The front's held in with some screws, which I think are just threaded into the windshield frame. But we'll break out the big gun and try to get them out. Yeah, it's just a sheet metal screw. I think that's loose. Doesn't feel very loose. These look like they should come out okay. So even this old wrench that's really small, you can't get under there to get on that bolt. It's not held captive, it's just spinning. It's nice that this thing will pack down flat, you know, Ikea style. It's going to be a while until I need this again. There are a couple of spots of rust on the corners of this, but overall, considering it had plants growing on it, it's really not in bad shape. On the hood hinges, I actually managed to get five of the bolts out. Three of them broke off and then two just rounded over. Probably going to be after some new hinge pins. But overall, the hood's not in bad shape either. Again, considering it had trees growing on it. a little bit more room to work here. I've already broken one breaker bar doing this, so I'm going to be a little more careful, but it does not want to budge. 
Come on, Eileen! You had to know that joke was coming. Well, I think we're at the point where desperate times call for desperate measures. We're gonna try some evaporust down the cylinders. I don't think it's gonna do any harm. As long as I don't spill any on the rest of the Jeep, the whole thing will disappear. I did some exploratory surgery on this front wheel to figure out why it was stuck. With as stuck as it was, I didn't see any point in trying to get the brake drum loose and get it off. So I just cut it off. Now the hub moves. So it's just the brake that's seized up, which is good. It means there's still some amount of wheel bearing in there. Like the day it rolled off the assembly line. With all four wheels rolling, we just cribbed the tub up and rolled the frame out from under it. This is pretty gross. I think I'm going to do some more power. Let's do a quick little walk around look at the frame. Starting up at the front here on this side, looks pretty good. There's some pitting here that would probably need to be addressed, but I don't think that's really a deal breaker. It's a little thin there. I think if you strapped over that, it would be okay. Working back more, body mounts are almost gone. But overall, this rail is not in horrendous shape. Back bumper, gone. And then you get over to this side and the carnage starts. This rail is just super thin all along the bottom. Got something chewing on it there. And then over here by the master cylinder have a gaping hole in it. From there forward, it's actually not bad, but that doesn't really matter. So basically what we have here is a steaming pile of rusty excrement. The frame's pretty much shot. The body's mostly gone. The motor's still stuck. I tried some ATF down the motor. I know that's another remedy, but no matter what snake oil or unicorn tears I get down, if I do get it freed up, it's still gonna need to be fully rebuilt to use it. And so probably the smart thing to do with this is part out what's good and haul the rest of it to the scrap yard. But what's the fun in that? So instead, what I'm gonna do with this is tear it down. First thing will be get a good frame under it, whether that's find another frame, build a frame, not sure yet. We'll see how that goes. Go through the axles, transfer case, transmission. Transmission, surprisingly, actually looks pretty good inside. It's kind of amazing. There's a little bit of, call it an extra chamfer on this one, but Overall, that's pretty incredible. And then after that, what am I gonna do with this? Well, this thing is small, lightweight, fairly simple. So I think this is gonna be a really interesting candidate to do an electric conversion on it. I mean, it has the aerodynamics of a refrigerator, which is a drawback, but I'm also gonna be terrified to drive this thing over 55 miles an hour. I'm going into this project with a full understanding that with the condition of this thing, this project's pretty ridiculous. I know I don't have the tools or the skills or the knowledge yet to do this, but I've also gotten really good at learning how to learn these things, and I have the tools to make the tools that I'll need. So, if you want to see this thing come back to life, stick around. Oh, and there's one other part that does actually work. <laughs> 